buoyancy control is a hallmark of a good diver. A good diver will have their depth pinned with minimal variation and stay horizontal at all times. If you are such a diver that has rapid air consumption or needs to be using their arms while diving, you know who you are, or needs to constantly kicking to stay afloat, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll go over some tips that give anyone struggling with their buoyancy or air consumption on how they can improve by hitting specifically neutral buoyancy. Practice makes perfect, but after this video, I hope to hear that you're hitting neutral buoyancy, your air consumption's improving, and you're able to keep that horizontal posture. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Don, and if you enjoy travel and adventure, you've come to the right channel where I share tips, experiences that help make sure that your next adventure is a wonder to behold. If you like and appreciate this video, make sure you smash that like button. It is essential to have the right weight when you're scuba diving, and you can make sure you have the right weight on the check dive. The check dive is your first dive where you'll check to make sure all your gear is working properly and that you have the correct weight for your buoyancy. The key is you want to aim for as little weight as possible, the bare minimum you can get away with, so you're inflating and deflating your BCD less. And this is where we'll improve your buoyancy control. As a beginner, the scuba shop that you're working with or you are probably going to put much more weight than you need in order to make sure you sink because it's usually better to sink than shoot to the top. However, this is going to hurt your buoyancy control and the better you get at knowing how much weight you need for the gear you have, the sooner you'll be able to start controlling your buoyancy control more strictly. If anything changes from your last dive, be it your tank, your fins, your gear, your wetsuit, maybe you gained a little bit of weight, it's worth doing a check dive with the amount of weight maybe you logged on the last dive and see how that does and be ready to shift it up or down as needed for the situation. When you're ready to start your check dive, enter the water with your BCD fully inflated. And then when you're ready to start your check dive, breathe in a deep breath and then hold it. And then let all of your air out. You should find you sink slowly and to your eye level. If you make this happen, then you're at a good amount of weight. However, if you keep sinking or can't reach your eye level, then you will have to adjust your weight. Either add more weight to sink more or take away weight to hit your eye level and hit that sweet spot. Now, once you find the right amount of weight that you need to sink, the next thing is to figure out where to position that weight in order for you to have a good trim. A good trim is described as a person's ability to stay horizontal and their positioning in their water. A horizontal trim is a good trim. But getting a good trim is not always so easy. You might find that your fins keep sinking, which is a common problem. And it might mean that you might need to take some of the weight on your waist and move it up to what you call the trim pockets on the upper torso of your BCD. They'll be near the top and this allows you to push your, your upper torso down. The opposite is true. If your upper torso is sinking and your fins are rising, you might have to take weight from the top and move it more down to your center of your, your waist. Another thing you can adjust are your fins. Fins can be positive, negative, or neutrally buoyant and this will adjust your fin and leg positioning in the water. So if you're having trouble staying horizontal, you might consider adjusting your fins as well. To show the power of controlling your weight properly, when my wife started scuba diving, she would always use 10 pounds in tropical environments when she started her diving. Her buoyancy control was all over the place over time and she fine-tuned her buoyancy control and understood how to weight herself, she's down to now two to three pounds in the same environments and her buoyancy control and trim are great. Air consumption is important. To have good buoyancy control, you need to have good command over your breathing in order to maintain your buoyancy over time. Consistency is the key. 
You want to have consistent and constant breathing where you keep returning to the midpoint of your lung and you go up and down. You don't need to breathe all the way in or breathe all the way out. But the main thing is you want to keep your breathing pattern stable and always having the neutral or point that you return to being the midpoint of your lung. Once you hit mid lung, you'll want to raise and hold or raise slowly over a period of time. And generally, you can make this period of time being two to three seconds. And you raise and then lower, always returning to your midpoint. For example, I can raise for two seconds and then lower for two seconds. No, I'm not breathing all the way in or breathing all the way out and I'm always returning to the mid lung. Most experienced divers are very good with their air consumption and breathing control. This enables them to dive well over an hour. Even diving deep is 30 to 40 meters in depth. And this is even more so with nitrox. And these divers will kick out you if you're the one bringing up early if you can't stay down long enough and this is another reason why it's important to have good air consumption in a group you can only stay down as long as the first person doesn't hit their air their low air bar or you hit max dive time ideally everyone hits the max dive time and so if you're bringing up the group early they're gonna all give you the steam guy the key to hitting neutral buoyancy after you start your dive is go down to your plan depth. Let's say if I'm going to 30 meters, I'm gonna go straight down to 30 meters. Don't touch that BCD. When you get down to 30 meters, breathe in halfway, half full lung. And observe, am I still sinking? Look at your dive watch. Am I sinking or am I staying neutrally buoyant? If you're still sinking, then you want to add a little bit of air to your BCD. The most important thing is how you push this button. Make sure you're using quick, short pulses. Bam! Don't push and hold. This is usually way too much air. Just one pulse. If that's enough, test your neutral buoyancy, then you're good. If you're still sinking with half full lung, then maybe another pulse. I never really have to do more than two. Conceptually, the best way to think about this is the weight that you begin to dive with is going to have a downward force. The deeper you go as, as well is you're going to have more downward force. And the way to offset this force is to add air to your lungs or your BCD. And this will give offset to that negative buoyancy. And this is where you get neutrally buoyant. But if you continue to add air to your BCD or breathe in deeper, you'll find you get positive buoyancy and will start going up. And this gives you that fine control. Also, it's worth noting, as you ascend, you will ascend faster with the same amount of air. And that's why you will also have to keep an eye on your gauge and make sure you're maintaining that neutral buoyancy when you're going up and shed air or breathe or empty the air from your lungs. And here's the trick. When you find you're using your BCD less and using your lungs for that fine control of your depth, you'll find that you're breathing naturally slower, being that you want to ascend a little bit or you want to descend a little bit, and maybe you want to stay at a good hover position. You'll find just naturally controlling that breath and your air consumption will improve over time as you strive to keep that neutral buoyancy. So make sure you're using those lungs instead of that BCD as much as possible. You need to hit that neutral buoyancy with that mid lung and you'll find your air consumption will go up rather drastically over time. Aside from some variations such as that brought to you from current, which can add some stress and also extra energy you need to expend that's probably gonna cause you to breathe maybe a little bit more rapidly than you normally would. And this could make your buoyancy control a little bit more erratic. So keep practicing and pin that depth. Stay horizontal. This is something that's going to take you a while to learn. It takes everyone a little while, but the practice, the more you practice, practice makes perfect and you will be a much better diver in the end. Another good hallmark of a good diver is to keep your hands tucked away in front of you and staying horizontal with a good trim. There is never a reason to be using your hands like this 
like this, or any other way you can imagine. The only time I use my hands is if I need to get close to something like coral and I want to avoid hitting the coral so I may use my arms for small adjustments making sure I keep away from the coral and I can take the thing that I'm taking a photo of precisely. So make sure you keep those hands tucked away. No flapping, swinging, or anything like this. Make sure you don't do it. It usually doesn't look good and you will look much more pro if you just keep those arms folded in front of you. If you're in current, another good position to break the waves is to put your arms like this. And if I have a camera, I might also put my arms or my camera in front like this as well. But you generally don't need your arms anywhere else. You can have them resting on your hips and have them resting in your folded position. The main thing is don't have them flapping around. If you find yourself struggling to stay horizontal and you feel you need to be using your hands or your fins, go back to the beginning of this video where I'm talking about weight control. It's likely you're still struggling with it. Now you go out and practice, practice, practice. You will not improve unless you're out there practicing toward neutral buoyancy, strong horizontal posture, and not using those arms. I hope to see you in the future on scuba diving. Take care.